This week on All About Android, we are discussing so much hardware. We've got a hands-on with the Samsung Galaxy Fold with Pocket Now's Jaime Rivera. We've got Ron's review of the Moto G7, and that is just the tip of the Android iceberg. There is so much hardware in this show. All About Android is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at WordPress.com. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash All About Android. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 416, filmed live on April 16th, 2019. We are your source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I am Florence Ion. And I'm Ron Richards, back uh, just in time for Jason to be out this week. Yes. So uh, you sub, you, you, I, I missed last week, Jason misses this week. It's all good because we have an awesome guest who's going to join us for the top of the show. Yes, right, we have Jaime Rivera. At Pocket now, Hello. Jaime, you're a CCO now. What's yeah, a CCO? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, Chief Creative Officer, I guess. Oh, I like that. So you get to come up with all the the creative directions of Pocket now. Let's just say it's just making a lot of things official, pretty much. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> very creative. Very creative. <laughs> well, uh, Jaime, we're, we're so excited to have you on because we have a pack show. Right, Flo? We've got so much hardware oh to God. talk about this uh, this episode. We've got a bunch of awesome other stuff going on in the Android world. But let's dive right into it because, Jaime, you only, we don't have you for the whole time. Uh, people got their hands on the Samsung Galaxy Fold, and you were one of them, correct? You mean this one? Oh, he has <laughs> it. Oh, oh he has it, it in everyone. person. Oh, they let you go home with I, one. Oh, yeah. Well, tell, tell us about the whole experience <laughs> because that was a bit of a surprise, right? Uh, so honestly, we were summoned to, uh, you know, a private event. We assumed like all of us, none of us were prepared to leave with the product. I mean, we kind of heard that, uh, there were limited supplies and everything. And, and no, I mean, they, they gave us the full time to play with the device. They gave us their preview and, uh, everything to expect about it. And, uh, then when we were on our way out, they're like, yeah, and here's your package. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Wait a second, you just had me for 45 minutes inside, filming my hands on and everything, and now you tell me I can leave with one? I would have left 45 oh, minutes ago. Oh, so you ago. were sweating bullets, trying to get all the B-roll that you could without realizing you, you, that they would give you one you so know you could how take we nicer B-roll. <laughs> you know how we work. Like, if I would have known, I would have just jumped out of there and gone to our office to film. Right. Um, but they had they had some experiences the, with the whole idea of augmenting. Uh, the fact that you have this product, uh, particularly the unboxing experience, they had these like special boxes. Uh, we actually tease that on our Instagram. And uh, the experience has been interesting. I've been using it for 24 hours. I'm actually, the reason I need to go is because I'm working on my 24 hours video to tell you know everybody about it. Because uh, setting up this phone is like different. It's unique. It's not like, it's like a Galaxy S10 Plus, but then it's not because there are things that are completely different. And it's understandable for Samsung, this is a new form factor. That's the whole idea. Oh, I, I'm sure Ron has a lot of questions. Ron, should I we roll the bumper it. first and then we can so, get yeah, into Yeah, we dove right in. We want a script. Let's, let's, let's make this official and go yeah, into hardware. Yeah, let's do it officially. Do it. <laughs> do it. Got to get that nice uh, music in. <laughs> okay, now now it is time. <laughs> now it's for, for real. So <laughs> Galaxy Fold, right out of the box, you said you got a great unboxing experience. My first yeah. question is, what does the Fold feel like? Do you yes, feel it creaking? Yes. Does it does, it, uh, does yes. it click? Does yes. it crack? Does it, yeah, like, oh what does it God. feel like? So, uh, l l l l listen to this. How does this sound? This is the coolest thing, the sound that the magnets yeah. make. Oh. The, the magnets are crazy strong. Like, if I could... Um, do I have an Apple Pencil here? Like, it'll literally cling on to anything. It's very, oh. very strong. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Another use very for your strong. Samsung Galaxy Fold. <laughs> so now what does it sound like go. when you when you fold it out, Bat? Like, does it, when it, uh, when it no, opens it, out? It, it, does, 
It doesn't sound like anything. There are no audio, you know, no audio cues that you've extended it. Um, mm. The feel is interesting. It's literally like if you if you if you have a do you have a Galaxy S10 with you? It's like stacking two together. Wow. Okay. So it's like it's stacking like... two together, and so that's good and that's bad. That's not necessarily uh, my cue for a best experience because it's it's not a pocketable device. Uh, mm. So, for example, what you get in the box, you get a pair of Galaxy Buds. Uh, you get this interesting case made of Kevlar, and mm. it's actually two pieces, two pieces in one. Oh wow! Um, because uh, yeah, because you have to snap it on. Um, and so, here's the thing. Because it's – and what else do you get? You get, you know, your typical wiring, USB-A, adapter, OTG. Um, that's that's what you get in the box. But, you know, probably the, the most interesting part is, again, it's because it's so thick. This – like I tr I've been trying to fit it on my jean pockets all day. No. Really? Unless you're using like baggy jeans or something like that, this is not a comfortable phone in your pocket. Yeah, it's baggy not. jeans aren't in anymore, so <laughs> it's going to hurt a lot of people. <laughs> I, exactly, exactly. So if you remember those ads, or probably I'm too old, uh, but the ads of the Razor <laughs> where it could fit into like really skinny jeans. Okay, this is not the phone. Not the phone at all. Again, grab grab two phones, two Galaxy S10s and stack them together. That's how this phone feels. It is thick. And it's, it's not just thick, but also let me try to, there's a clip where I show the specifications in the video. You notice that there's a separation in between. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. It yeah, looks like two phones total, held together by a by a hinge. And uh -huh. sure, there's a lot of beautiful technology here and everything. But, you know, going back to the feel, uh, probably for me, the, the most important, the most interesting part is it doesn't it's like if Samsung doesn't want it to feel like a phone. It's like, listen, whatever we've been doing for the past decade of flat slabs and everything, this is something different. And so it's got its pros and its cons uh it's got the pros that it's like really good for one-handed use because of the small display up front it's very very easy to manipulate the problem is that the screen is like it's like an external screen for an old flip phone mm. you won't be able to do much with it uh, that was my question that was my question what do you find yourself doing with the with the yeah. front screen yeah okay so once i i figured out a couple of things uh so like one of the things that I'm writing on my script right now for my video is like the first thing is the launchers are different. So whatever you see in the external screen is not what you'll see in the oh internal. Oh my gosh, um, that is a throwback. Yeah, it's a completely different thing. And so you won't complain about the quality of either displays. Both displays are gorgeous and everything. It's just the external one doesn't necessarily work with the internal one. And so however yeah. you have your folder set on the inner screens is not how it works on the outside. You're going to have to set your folders up again. One oh. a, a separate. So that's not a good experience. Uh, and then like the only thing that's like mirrored is like if you select that you want the app tray on the front display, it'll bring you the app tray on the back display. But then your folders are all gone and you have to start over. Um, so that is is it's like that level of disparity is probably one of the things that at first had me a little off. Uh, and then I just took the time to build my folders and that was it because like folders, like if you notice, all you can fit are three icons at the front. That's about it. And then I had to like widgets are like extremely small. Yeah. Like this is not a use. This is not a usable screen. That looks like really not small text. That doesn't look comfortable to read. Exactly. It is not. Um, and then you've you've got cases like, for example, it's designed for you to interact with the product, like uh, if you're on a rush. Uh, but then the Samsung keyboard, because I'm multilingual and you're multilingual too. Cool, yeah, I completely. Very, yeah. <clears throat> I switched the Samsung keyboard off because I'm multilingual, and so you know I I drift more to SwiftKey because of that functionality in addition to the swipe flow sort of design that SwiftKey has, which is crazy. Um, it's really practical for the outer display that, you know, swiping on that keyboard is the best thing you can do. But then the problem is that if because this thing is so wide on the inside, you have to use the keyboard split. But then if you split it on the inside, one thing that does mirror is that it'll split the keyboard on the outside. And so that's just like, what? 
that's one thing that I wish I had an option to like have one keyboard for the outside, one keyboard <laughs> for the inside, but that actually does mirrors. So it's 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 just it's weird. Yeah. So so have you had a chance to play with any of the other folding phone prototypes that are out there? And and if so, it, how is the how does this one uh, yeah. compare? I was one of the first people to try out the Matex by mere coincidence. Oh. I was I was just at the right place at the mm. right time and actually I did a video because before touching the Madex, because when we were at MWC in Barcelona, they didn't let anybody touch the fold at all. We were at the unpacked event flow. You were there with me. They didn't let us touch mm -hmm. the Galaxy fold at all. Mm -hmm. It actually wasn't even on display. I even heard that there were certain people that were allowed to touch it, but we we weren't part of that group. Um, we were at MWC. We were invited to a special preview. Still weren't allowed to touch it. And, uh, <laughs> you know. In between that, I land at the right party at the right time with the right person from Huawei, and he's mm. like, "You want to play with the? You want to play with the X?" And I'm like, "If I can show it on video, yes." And he's like, "Yeah, here, hold it." And so somebody filmed me using it. The Mate X is a completely different product. The Mate X is more like. I, I, I don't know. I didn't believe in foldables before that. And that's the reason why he gave me the product, because he's like, I've been watching your videos. I've been hearing you criticize the concept of foldables. Here's a foldable. Tell me what you think. <laughs> And I'm like, wow. So my my response was, OK, I'm, I've changed my mind. But the reason why is because the Mate X feels like a Galaxy Note 9. It's slightly thicker than a Galaxy Note 9 when it's closed. But then when you open it, it feels like a Kindle Oasis. And so it feels mm. like two products that are already in the market. Uh, and for me, that was the thing. Like if the product can feel like a phone when you use it like a phone, then great. The, the Galaxy Fold doesn't. The Galaxy Fold feels like a tablet with an assisted small, you know, secondary screen. That's how it feels like. Hmm. But it's it's, that's, it's more like a tablet than anything. That's what that's what my main now I have not I was not invited. I did not get an unboxing experience. <laughs> I you know it, and and listen, I'm pro foldable. So maybe that's why. I, they don't need to convert I'm me. Not. Um but my, I wasn't. but my I was. Yeah, but my main kind of uh takeaway after seeing the Galaxy Fold was yeah, was that how functional as a phone is this? This looks like a tablet you can fold in half. And same thing with the Huawei Mate. So it's really interesting to hear that the Mate feels like a phone and not a tablet. The Mate when you close it, and it's funny how many people were criticizing the Mate because of the design. So it, it's got this button that you press and it unsnaps and it opens up and it turned. But the thing about it is it feels like a Kindle Oasis. If you've ever used one, that's exactly the feel from the lightweightness of the of, of the design to the sturdiness of the product. It feels like a very well done product. Um, and then you snap it in the back. And so obviously that brings a lot of challenges. That display is a polymer, it'll scratch. Mm. That's yep. the smart thing about the fold, the fact that the screen is protected on the inside. So from a durability standpoint, I feel that this device will probably last longer. Okay. Um, it, it, it's this device is like a mishmash of hardware like on the outside it's aluminum it's glass at the bottom and then on the top it's got this sort of like polycarbonate and then it's the special polymer inside for the screen and you won't be able to see it here you have to like and this is something that i just noticed like 30 minutes ago it's got a screen protector on the on the oh, plastic built in already but but it's so well, like I'm not even going to try to take it off because I, I can't just buy a replacement. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, you can totally see that there's a sort of a screen protector here. But you, you have to look like really closely to notice it. In the case of the Mate X, there is a, there's a case that will protect the outside um, that'll feel like a holster. Um, but yeah, I know that for me, yes, from a durability standpoint, I feel that the Mate X is not going to last as much. But then... Here's the thing. That one does feel like a phone when you close it. You close it, and again, it's like if you're using a Galaxy Note, like what you're showing in the video right there. It, it, not that screen that you're showing, but the other one, the 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 one at the at the front. Uh, yep. Both screens are actually usable, but the but the larger screen actually makes it feel like a Note Nine. And then when you open it, it 
feels like an Android tablet, uh, which is funny because Android tablets were never really popular. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so after getting to play with both of these and getting a like, so is the foldable thing a gimmick? Is this a is this a a uh, you know just a trend that we're going through and it's not going to stay, or is this truly the future of phones? Yeah. I, you know, I called it before a solution in search of a problem. You don't need, it's mm. like a smartwatch. You don't need a smartwatch. Uh, it's like a tablet. You don't really, you don't need a tablet. These are just really cool, convenient things. You do need a smartphone. You do need a computer. And these products are like trying to blur the lines in between and provide, I, I would say, enhanced experiences. Uh, but in the case of tablets, we've already discovered that they are more practical for content consumption. I'd rather consume on a tablet than I would on a computer. So it makes sense. Like Samsung's argument in the briefing was, okay, people want a larger screen, but they don't want to carry a larger device. And so their solution is to create the foldable. That sort of makes sense. Uh, I just, I wish the foldable were thinner, I guess. Uh, that's, you know, that's the biggest challenge. The thing about it is. If you guys remember what, you know, smartphones used to be, I mean, this is just the the situation we're in. This is where technology is right now. And uh, even if in the past I would call these a solution in search of problem, these are really cool solutions. Crazy expensive, but, you know, the more that I play with it, the more that I like it. It just, it needs to grow on me. It's like one of those things where it's like, I, I assume it's like the first time you ever use a smartphone after coming from a keyboard, like a typical BlackBerry mm -hmm. keyboard and then moving to a screen. My God, my first two weeks with an iPhone were horrible. Uh, <laughs> just just trying to adapt from using a hardware keyboard to using that you know glass screen. And now, if you make me use a BlackBerry again, I can't. Uh, and so, you know, <laughs> I, I guess there's muscle memory involved. It's a paradigm shift uh, for Samsung. This is a new form factor for Huawei. This is a new form factor, and you know. It'll take time for the technology to be perfected for like the hinge design is crazy. If you look at the internal, like we we saw a full presentation over how the hinge works, there's a lot of hardware here. There are a lot of moving parts in this thing uh, to make this possible. Can, I like can the you feel design. if you run your fingers across it, can you feel the little crease in the middle? You can. You can. You can. Okay. You can. You will definitely feel the crease. If you're using the dark mode, you will be able to see it as well. If you're using the mm. the regular, uh, it actually comes by default with the white display. And so you won't be able to see it that way. It's only when you use the dark mode. And it's not that you see, like for me, it's it doesn't really bother me. It's like for me, I, I know that a lot of people complain about it. And I'm like, Dude, it's like complaining about the crease on a book. The, you know, it, it opens Fair. and closes. It's, it's <laughs> meant to do that. So there will be something in the middle. It's like a car door where because it needs to open, it's going to have these like little cutouts on yeah. the borders of the door. That's I mean, that's just the way it is. There's no sort of liquid metal that'll just open the door and nothing will be shown. That's just where that's just the way things are. It's engineering. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's engineering. Do you feel like the front of the phone, though, like it doesn't look like a Galaxy S10. It looks like you said, no. a, it's an addendum <laughs> to the actual like folding yeah. device. Yeah, yeah. Does, uh, I mean, does it make you like not want to, because I would imagine like multitasking, for instance, like I'm rushing maybe i'm like trying to look for the map on my phone and i don't want to open my phone like can you do that comfortably or do you feel like you have to open it to really use it so um for example if you're using anything other than a galaxy s10 e using a smartphone today with one hand is a nightmare it's yeah, it that's just the way it is <laughs> um because this product is thicker and because the screen is so narrow mm -hmm. i have like i've I have found found myself finding it just easier. I get a notification, I immediately react to it. And because there's app continuity, you then decide, do you, I need to open the thing or do I just continue here? And uh, I just feel that Samsung still needs to work on their keyboard. Like again, if they could add better, you know, if they could add swipe functionality, 
they would make it even easier to be able to because that, then that would be like the total one handed used product where I just respond to a message quickly and then I just shut the phone down and don't use it anymore and just put it back in my pocket. So in those kinds of situations, it is I found myself to find it more practical. Maybe we have this conversation in a week and I'll be like, I love it. But right now for me, it's <laughs> just it's a huge departure for from the P30 Pro that I was using. So. <laughs> You know, well, it's, it's and, just and it's. I think you make work. a great point because it's a new hardware paradigm, and the software has to catch up. And from everything yeah. I've read about it and what's going on, is that they still we still need to figure out what the UI experience is with the two phones and how, with the two screens and how they work. And that's going to take iteration. You know, like the f first step it's, was make it work, make it fold, and make the screens work. Now figure out the software. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. But I feel I feel that they've done a ton of really cool things with the software, but everything is focused on the inside. Like mm -hmm. assume that the outside again, you're using a Moto Razor and the most you could do is like take a selfie with it with the outer <laughs> display and pressing the, the volume button. That's what you have here well, for Samsung. It's like, listen, we don't want you to be on the inside. We want to we want you to be on the outside. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you were going to say something. Sorry, you were going to say something. Oh no, I was going to say that. I was going to say using the front for selfies is perfect for free flow. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Wait, but, and so, but but here's the thing: these are missed. There are some missed opportunities. Like if you, there are six cameras, right? So you have three at the back, geez. two at the two inside, <laughs> and then one here. So here's the thing: if you hold the product like this, the smaller screen is here. Your primary cameras are here, so why can't we just turn on these this outer display and use it for selfies? It would have been perfect, but no, you can't. You can't turn on the outer display oh, while the product. Oh, good point. Yeah, that that's like a such a missed opportunity. But then you know, I, this is what I feel. But then I do understand the reason why. If you try to take a selfie with this thing open, like in in landscape mm -hmm. mode, it's kind of a nightmare to jar this product without feeling like if you're going to drop it. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally understand the engineering reason why, you know what? Yeah, let's not do it. Or probably they haven't thought about it. And guys, it was my idea. So patent my name on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then again, because the software was designed mostly for for the inside, uh, the multitasking is like really cool. Being able to, you know, launch Chrome, and then when you launch Chrome, you swipe from the side, and then you choose an app. Let's say you want to throw WhatsApp in, and I then saw you just dragging. You, yeah, you're just dragging and yeah, opening. You, you just drag like that, and then you. Uh, but the problem is again. Depending on the, the design of the app, sometimes the dragging is a little impractical, and mm -hmm. then I want to grab my Amazon app and drag it and throw it down there. But then there are certain apps that aren't supported. And so right. I like the fact that Samsung will be like, all right, fine. If the app is not supported, then I'll just have the app float over okay. all other two apps. So you can still multitask to it. Uh, and that's the reason why you need those 12 gigs of RAM, by the way. So so it defaults to that mode because I think it does that on the other GS phones as well. So it just defaults to that mode. That makes sense. Ex exactly. Exactly. So there, there is a solution for me that that's a really, really cool part of it. Uh, but then, you know, uh, oh, and the other thing is app continuity. Like I was telling you, you could probably start a message from here and be like, you know what? I need a bit more real estate. So you I just have more open. to say. <laughs> yeah. And, and most applications, uh, the one like Samsung was telling us, obviously, you know, we just had a developer conference. We had a lot of developers jump on. And so you've they've got WhatsApp. They've got pretty much the Facebook applications and they've got Microsoft applications in. They've got Google mostly, uh, for example, Chrome will will work well gmail doesn't necessarily do mm. so um but there are a lot of apps that already support the multi-window and there are a, a lot of apps that already support the continuity not all of them some apps you know for example you will start something again because these are two different interfaces the outside and the inside you will open and sometimes it will either not open the app or it will open the app but it won't the you know the cursor won't be exactly where you left it so, you know, again, it's still a work in progress. Uh, clearly. Uh, so I'm curious, what about, uh, very quickly, the camera? You had a chance to, you know, see. Like, like if, you, if you've used an S10 Plus, this is literally an S10 Plus in every okay. absolute way. 
which makes me wonder why for two thousand dollars, well, nineteen hundred and eighty, I guess. Uh, why is there no time of flight sensor? There's a depth sensor, an eight megapixel depth mm -hmm. sensor in the in the inner selfie camera. But you know that if you get the Galaxy S10 5G, that includes a time of flight sensor. There are some added functions to that that you if you if I don't know if you've played with the S10 5G. I did play with it in Barcelona. Uh, you know there there's like augmented video where you can you know like depth sensor sensing full-blown 3D sensing video. Uh, there are certain options that you can do with the S10 5G that you can't do with the others. Uh, and so that's not on, on the fold at all. Another thing that's not on the fold is the Instagram mode. If you see the Instagram oh, mode yeah. on the S10, you won't get it on the fold. They made a big deal at about that. Now. They didn't even put it on the fold? Hmm. No, mm. no. It's, it's <laughs> now, here's the thing. When I opened the box, immediately popped it out, there was already a software update. Mm. Uh, so this is not... Uh, actually, these are European units, by the way. Uh, they were like, you know, this was the quickest way for us to get you units. Uh, so, you know, we even asked, like, can can we make full reviews out of them? They're like, well, we can't tell you not to. Uh, but obviously not. There are certain things that won't necessarily right. work here, like Samsung so, Pay and everything. Go for it. I was going to say, why are they – it seems like they're rushing this. Yes, a little. Right? Like, like, especially given the positioning with the price point and all that sort of no, stuff. It just I, seems Right. Or am I, am yeah. I crazy? No. So they're, they, I guess they rushed for us to be able to have units because I do know that the devices that you can pre-order today for T-Mobile, AT&T and Best Buy that you'll be able to pick up on the 26, those are final. Those are final. It's just apparently those U.S. units weren't available for us to grab okay. yet. Okay. And, and so this is that's the reason why they were like, you get European ones. Let's wait. You know, after the 26, let's talk about U.S. models. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so, I, I, hmm. yeah I, I believe that they did the same with the Note 5, I believe. Uh, you know, sometimes you have I mean, just to build this hinge, I forget how many parts are in the hinge. So I, I do understand that this is like a manufacturing nightmare <laughs> right now. <laughs> So I would love to see uh, that I, video. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I would love to see how these things are manufactured because, you, you know, and I, I feel that most companies I actually in, in a conversation that I had with Huawei, I was like, you know, after I held the product because, you know, we, we had so many conversations. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. And then they give me the product that I'm like, OK, I, I actually started caring now a lot. Like, really, like I really like this. And so that's what I told Huawei. You guys should probably work on bringing certain media to see the process of building this product. And, you know, I, I said the same to Samsung because uh, you you don't understand the difficulty of what it takes to mass produce something like this until you see it or until you show it. And it just gives you a little more perspective as to why. Like, for example, why is this product so expensive? I didn't understand it until I understood that these were two phones snapped into one mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. and a third feature phone at the back. That's pretty much what you're buying here. These and are six cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Six cameras. And also, like the screen, this is a dynamic AMOLED display, but actually no other product has the screen. Mm. They had they went through I don't know how many hurdles to be able to make the screen this thin. Because to make it to make it bend, the, the challenge wasn't just the hinge. That was like the the most difficult engineering part were the, the hinge and how to make the display thinner to be to be able to do that. Sure. And obviously yeah. to be able to and obviously to be able to do it for 300,000 repetitions, which is what this is certified for. Uh, I probably have already wasted like around 1,000 hmm. <laughs> in the past 24 hours because everybody, like it's hilarious. I, I walked into an Apple store to pick up a pair of AirPods, uh, the new AirPods. And the moment I pulled it out to respond to an email, they're like, you've got I'm the new sure. foldable? It's so like everybody <laughs> walked around. It's like, oh, it's just folding it, just playing with it. It's It's, it's funny. It's definitely going to be something people want to see. I mean, it is the new hotness, and, and I'm very jealous it, that you have your hands on one. It is the new hotness, and, you know, smartphones are, you know, the smartphones have been going. It's funny how, you know, Flo and I have been walking into so many briefings for the longest time. And I remember when HTC recently, uh, I think it was the, the U11, or no, the HTC 10. The intro for that presentation was smartphones have become boring. And so they walked us through all this presentation and then they gave us another smartphone that looked exactly the same. So this is it's 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 it's, it's funny how Samsung didn't use any of that for this presentation. They were like this is the future. And uh, I have to agree. Uh 
because the, the only way to get to the future is to actually experiment now. I mean, the Nintendo Switch wouldn't be what it is if there weren't the flops of the of the previous mm -hmm. Nintendos that launched yeah. in the middle to be able to allow this functionality. So I'm not going to criticize it. You know, I, I, I would have a really hard time criticizing the boldness uh, because I was the first person to crack up on when I saw the Galaxy Note for the first time in Berlin. And I can't live without that thing now, you know, <laughs> so it's it's just that you need that transition period and that transition period will give you certain limitations uh certain difficulties i can totally understand where the technology is now but the only way to perfect that is to support it you know that's that's right that's at least my perspective right now it's definitely we're definitely at a crossroads and we're either gonna you know embrace this and go down the road of it or it's gonna stick out like a uh like a, a chapter in history like hey remember when we had foldable phones you know and and uh it, it seems as if the the manufacturers are are staking their claim behind it so i don't know i love it exactly. I, I, I love I love change to your point, like changing up the paradigm in some way and making us, you know, pushing are the boundaries of what we're used to in terms of what a phone can do and how it works and how it interacts. And it can be a bumpy road. But to your point, the note, we we mocked the note. We, we said it was huge yeah. and there's no way anyone wants a phone that big and all that sort of stuff. And now it's such a standard. I remember that my photo for that Berlin trip was me holding a Galaxy Note in my ear and just cracking up. So it was <laughs> intended to be a parody, and now it's reality. That's yeah, just that's the way it is. <laughs> you know, it, it, but that's – that's listen, that's – it's – I have to – you know, companies that I admire, one, definitely Samsung. Uh, how many products? I mean the smartwatch. Who is not wearing a smartwatch right now? Does anybody remember what company built the first one? It was Samsung. It was Samsung. Yeah. Samsung. Was. Samsung did it before the Pebble. And I remember that we we went to that briefing and it was like, wait a second, you can make phone. This is literally a phone in your wrist. And we just chuckled at the design, how ugly it was. We criticized it so badly. And now, you know, obviously it took many years for it to be perfected into what we're wearing now. Uh, yeah. Samsung, you know, they did with the Galaxy, with the Galaxy Note. Uh, they have had a few innovations. Uh you know the same with Apple when they launched the iPhone. People made fun of them, and look at what we're, we're look at where we're at now. And and the other company that I admire is Huawei because of the amount of money they throw at R and D. Like literally, whatever it's like, it's like the Google of hardware, where a lot of things like Project Fi is just an internal project, and they'll give you funding to be able to get it to to work. And if it works after a year or so, they'll make it a product. That's pretty much what Huawei does. And so I find it fascinating. Like if you were if you ask me which one do I prefer, do I prefer the Fold or the Mate X? I, you know, I, it's hard for me to say which one I like more because I like both. Um, I find that this form factor is more durable. I find that that one is the other one is more of what I would envision a foldable to be, where I can fully use the outer display as a phone and then I could switch into a tablet whenever I want to because I am a tablet user. People, there are a lot of people that are like, yeah, you don't need a tablet. Agreed. I I do personally need tablets for my workflow. I use them a lot. So things that I would have loved about this Galaxy Fold, I would have wanted a, a, an S Pen on this thing so badly because I yep. do use stylus. I do use the S Pen. I do use the Apple Pencil like significantly in my workflow. I, I write down my scripts for my videos and then I use the S Pen as a highlighter for what shots I've had, notes over my experience and things. And so, and and I've been on planes. I've I've noticed more people now using the Apple Pencil than ever before. Uh, I have a really good friend of mine that's a cartoonist, and for him, the Apple Pencil is like the second thing only to a Wacom, which is great. And so, you know, I I wish that this thing would have given me more functionality for the tablet portion. Uh, but again, I it's only been twenty four hours. First I need generation more time. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's first generation, and I do need more time with it. Uh, it, but you know, it's, it's funny, but I guess I now understand why they made this like so, so narrow. If you think about it, if you're holding two phones stacked together, if you, if they made this, the size of a, of a, an, of an S10 plus stack two of them together, this would be a very heavy product, yeah. very heavy. And so I think that they started with like a weight they were like, okay, we need the hinge, which on its own has so many parts that'll make it crazy heavy. And then they were like, all right, and so it, it can't be that heavy. So they probably had a target weight 
plus the battery that they could fit into it. And I guess that they work from there. But this is just my speculation. I, you know, I, I have no <laughs> idea how they how they went about it. But yeah, if they if they made it more like the Mate X, this would be a crazy thick product. Whereas in the case of the Mate X, that hump that's in the bottom sort of like the Kindle Oasis is where everything is. Mm. All the hardware is in that is in that portion. But then Huawei was like, you know what? Why are we going to add cameras to this thing if we could use this, uh, use the same primary cameras for selfies and for everything? So what I would have loved to see from Samsung doing this is something you can already do with the Mate X whenever it launches. Yeah, I think that's a great point. So oh, this well, hi, mate. Yeah, it's crazy. Jaime, thank you so much for this this great no. uh, breakdown of it. Everyone should go check out uh, your video on YouTube. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Fold is awesome. Uh, great it video. <laughs> uh, yeah, so definitely go watch that. And uh, Jaime, I know you were, you were limited on time, so we don't hold you much longer. I do. But, uh, I, do. Yeah. I, I appreciate your, your understanding. It's just – it's. Oh. I've got so many videos to do on this thing. It's just crazy. <laughs> hey, we appreciate your time and coming on here to tell us your experience. This you're you're hyping it up. So now we really so, want to get our yeah. hands on one. So before you go, where can people find you? Yes. Uh, either at Pocket Now, everywhere, both Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, all social media, and uh, personally at Jaime underscore Rivera on Twitter, Jaime Rivera on Instagram. I'm mostly on Instagram than anything. But uh, no, thank you guys for for having me, and we should have this conversation again after I've played with yes. it a little more. Yeah, yes. for sure. And I want I want Jason to be here to hear your your take on this stuff because I know Jason would 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 love this conversation. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's yeah. So uh, thank you so much, Jaime. It was great having you on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you so much. A pleasure. Bye bye. All right. Wow. All about foldables. What do you say? Flo? I, Want to change the name of the show? <laughs> I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good one. I am just. Well, I'm. I'm still processing a lot of that right now. Well, why don't why don't why don't we mix it up and instead of staying on the hardware boat, why don't we switch over to news and get through the news? Yeah. Let's get through the news. I think that. Yeah. Keeping Victor on his toes. Now for the rest of the show. We're going to fold in Android news. <laughs> I like that. It reminds me of pancakes, though, and now I'm hungry. You know, when you fold in stuff. Yeah, away. thanks. I was working on that the whole time. Anyway, show. it's dinner time. That's why. So remember a few years back um, when folks were complaining about their dying Nexus 6, 6Ps? Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I know quite a few people in my life who had had problems with that. So it turns out that there were so many folks who were not having it that they filed a class action lawsuit against Huawei and Google uh, for the apparent boot loop problem that struck some of these Nexus 6Ps. So if you remember back in the day, there were some boot loop issues like the Nexus 6Ps would effectively die. It didn't matter how much battery they had, they would just peter out. Well, Last week, the two companies, Google and Huawei, had finally agreed to settle with this class action lawsuit. It's been going on for two years. So this started in April 2017. Uh, the lawsuit alleges that Google and Huawei breached the device warranty since they were aware of the issue, the boot looping issues, and they didn't respond to it. So both are liable to a $9.75 million settlement for the class action lawsuit that began Two years ago, payments up to $400 for participating plaintiffs. And if you had happened to be a part of this set and you had gone through the warranty exchange program, which got you a pixel in exchange uh, for your broken 6P, you're only eligible for up to $10. But hey, that's some free apps. So if you got it, claim it. So... This is just one of the many lawsuits that's been going on. And man, this really flew under the radar. So did you guys know that LG was the last in the hot seat for boot looping issues with the G4, V10, V20, Nexus uh -oh. 5X, and the G5. And this was happening just in January. Oh my Lord. <laughs> so that's a lot of boot, like, it's a lot of boot looping. Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's a lot of phones just on constant going. Um, so, mm. so are you in the 6P suit as a 6P owner? I actually think my husband might be because he had to replace right. his battery with an yeah. aftermarket battery to get the 6P working. But I'm not because the 6P I had was a review unit. So I didn't. Oh, didn't so, you're, you're, so you're not in it. You can't cash nothing. in on that. So yeah. I got nothing oh. in the game. 
Maybe Jason's going to cash in on it as well, too. So, mm-hmm. man, we love legal. We love legal uh, class actions. That's fun. I mean, um, it's money. <laughs> all right. Well, moving on, um, you know, everybody's security is just on everybody's mind. And, of course, it's on Google's mind as well. And that's why Google rolled out a new two-step verification system that actually doesn't leverage SMS or emails or push notifications, rather your actual phone. Uh, so they announced the beta for the system where your phone can be your security key. Really interesting. So listen to this. It's built into devices running Android 7.0 uh, and higher. And uh, you use it to protect you, you can use it to protect your own Google account as well as your Google Cloud accounts at work. And they also recommend it for people in their advanced protection program. And that's people like journalists, activists, business leaders, and political uh, campaign teams who are at most risk of targeted online accounts, uh, online attacks. Um, and so basically to activate the phone's built-in security key, you need to have Android 7.0 and uh, a Bluetooth enabled Chrome OS, Mac OS X, or Windows 10 computer with a Chrome browser. And basically what you do is you go into your Google account uh, uh, um, on your phone, you make sure you're enrolled in the in the two-step verification program. Then on your computer, you visit the two-step verification set- settings and click add security key. And then you choose the Android phone from the list of available devices, and you're done. It uses Bluetooth to send the security key to the phone. And now when you're um, when you're signing in, you make sure Bluetooth is turned on your phone and the device you're signing in on. And you'll get a uh, – and it shows here you get a prompt saying, hey, someone's trying to access your account. Is this you? And you say, yes, it is, or you say, no, it's not. Um, and it gives an added layer of security. Um, and Google touted their own Titan uh, security keys, mm-hmm. uh, and they actually suggest that they recommend you register a backup security key to your account in case you lose your phone. So, uh, Flo, what do you think of uh, this this kind of step towards even added security? Uh, is this enough to protect people from getting their stuff hacked? I mean, I would hope that I would hope that it is. It's it's certainly like it's an extra gate, right? It, which yeah. always helps, and that always helps. That's why we always say like do tufa, enable that. That's going to enable that extra little gate before anybody gets but, in. But that's the thing is that that's getting. I mean, I told you the story offline. A friend of mine got caught up in the in the in the big SIM cloning uh, thing that's yep. been going on at T-Mobile, where they he had two factor authorization set up for everything, and someone cloned his SIM card and took over his phone number and then reset his password and got. Got the code via SMS and was able to re- to change all his passwords and take over his accounts. Like it's horrifying. Now, if he had this, he would have to have the physical phone next to the computer trying to access the account, and you'd get an alert on your phone, and it goes through like a very tight security key. Um, seems to be a little more protected, you know. As people who are doing malicious things are figuring out ways to break the ways that work, like 2FA. We need to come up with things like 2SV to help navigate it to be even more secure. So. That is a good point. And uh, also, I think that everybody should enable this. Anybody yes. who has yep. a huge stake, especially in their Google account. Yep. Or if you have like 19 Google accounts like I do, like just lock them down, lock them down. <laughs> just lock them all down. Yeah. You see, I went from pop three to now I'm just all IMAP and Google. And literally my lot, I, I actually hit the point on a Chrome browser where I'd logged into too many accounts. I got a warning that I, I needed to sign out of one before I could log into wow. another. And you know what? And then it doesn't let you pick which one to sign out of. You have to sign out of all of them, which is a huge pain in the butt. So. Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> they're trying to keep you safe, right? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Sure. So. Uh, so also in trying to keep safe. Uh, so I'm kind of more familiar with the, this is our next news item. I'm kind of more familiar with this because I do the nature of my job. Sometimes I need to record conversations. And I do, of course, after I tell the person on the line that I am going to record it. And I used to be able to do this with Android apps. But in recent years, this has become virtually impossible to do on an Android phone which is why I don't do my interviews over the phone anymore. I do them all through my computer, through Hangouts. So this was made even harder on your Google phone recently because Google had blocked the last known method that any of the call recording apps could use to access that feature. Well, fortunately, XDA developers, they are saying that Google's considering adding a native call recording API in a future version of Android So in Google's issue tracker, the following comment was left from a Googler. Our development team has been adding call recording APIs on their roadmap. It's something that we would like to address in a future version of Android. However, due to the security and privacy implications of such APIs, it is not something we can deliver for the Q release. So it's not coming soon, but the idea is that it's there. It's happening. And I, for one, would like to see if I could get like an official 
if I could have like a robot, like you press a button and then maybe the robot says like, this call is being recorded or monitored or whatever, then that kind of takes care of the legalities for me. I feel like that would be very helpful. Uh, but of course it would probably bum out a lot of the app developers who made recording apps. So there's also- But that, but that, 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 that is, that is uh, and such is progress, right? Exactly. That's what has to happen, you know? And so they need to, if they need to adjust, they need to adjust. And that's, that's uh, what's gotta happen. I mean, this isn't the first time app developers have made a bit of functionality then Google's come in and added it to the OS, right? That's very true. So. Yeah. And it's worth mentioning, by the way, that that XDA developers article mentions Android R, which I haven't even thought about because we're still wow. trying to figure out Android Q. Android R, Raspberry. Oh. Anyway, so, all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're going to round out this bit batch of news with some interesting data from Q4 2018. We love data, don't we, Flo? Yes, we do. Um, so listen to this. Florence, uh, uh, Florence, Victor, are you guys sitting down? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Victor, are you sitting down? I know you like to stand when you do the show. I'm standing, but he's hang standing. On. Okay. 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 He's sit down. I heard I him. He's sitting down. He's sitting down now. All right. Listen to this. Over one third of consumers who bought the Google Pixel 3 in Q4 2018 and the OnePlus 6T, that should be OR, or the OnePlus 6T during Q4 2018 were previously Samsung owners. Think about that. What does that a say? A third of the G Pixel 3 and OnePlus 6T purchases were former Samsung users. Uh, this is according to CounterPoint Research, uh, CounterPoint Research's U.S. smartphone smartphone churn tracker. Um, and also interesting, less than one in five people who bought either device were a previous Apple user. All right. So this is the rise of the Pixel and OnePlus as phones. Uh, in Q4, the Google Pixel uh, accounted for 7.3% of Verizon's total sales, while the OnePlus 6T made up 2.4% of T-Mobile's total sales. Now, that might seem like a small number, but 2.4% of all of T-Mobile sales with all the phones they make going to OnePlus, uh, is a, I think that's a huge deal. Yeah, that is, and especially shows that people are finding out about, like Samsung is no longer the only one that's kind of associated. For a while it was, if you saw Android marketing, a lot of that was tied to Samsung, which was kind of a, a bummer for the rest of us. But now, even recently I saw that, I think LG was knocked out of like the number three spot or something and replaced by yep. Google. Like their, their marketing is clearly working. People are getting the message that there's more than just a Samsung phone that you can choose from. And not to mention like the Pixel, that camera is phenomenal. And then in the 6T, that's an amazing value that you're getting for like basically $600. You're not gonna yep. get that for with the Samsung devices. Well, I, if anything, these trends are interesting in that I think people are, we always talk about people being so loyal to Apple and a Samsung. And it, yeah. and it seems as if now Samsung users are starting to crack maybe. I don't know if the fold will be, will bring them back. Um, but Apple users, I think definitely, I haven't, I talked to, you know, I've the not majority, but a lot of the people I talked to who are Apple users express frustration with the iPhone. And is it the time that they're coming and looking at the Pixel? They, you know, Google stepped up the marketing. They, you know, they, they've really made an effort to make this a consumer friendly phone. It seems like it's working. I see so. a lot more of them out in the wild than I used to. That's for sure. Yeah. So, all right. So that's going to wrap it up for news. Let's take a break. We've been going for a while. Let's thank our sponsor because uh, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by WordPress, one of my favorite people, the folks at WordPress. Uh, and they want to ask you a question. What would you do if you could do anything? Now you can build a website that can with WordPress.com. With powerful site building tools, thousands of themes, and 24-7 support from real experts, WordPress.com lets anyone pursue whatever it is they love by launching a site that's free to start with room to grow. WordPress.com was started so anyone can publish their ideas. No two-week trials, no hidden fees, and best of all, WordPress users own their content forever. It is your website. It's your content. You own it. WordPress.com is built to grow with you, to get you where you want to be tomorrow. Their customer, customer support team is made of actual WordPress experts who are standing by to help you 24 hours a day, including weekends, which let's be honest, that's when you actually have time to work on your website, nights and weekends. They are standing by to help you when you need it. 
Uh, the WordPress platform is so flexible and powerful that some of the biggest companies on earth use it to build their websites, and millions of people use WordPress.com every day to turn their dreams into reality. I am one of them. Every time I need to roll a new website, I turn to WordPress. Um, all the my the websites that I, I manage on my personal side of things for podcasts, um, uh, FinalePodcast.com, my website for the for my other podcast is is run on WordPress because it's so easy to get the site up and running, and I can fine tune it to look and act the way I want to. And when I get into a jam, WordPress supports is there to help me. So listen, don't take my word for it. This is what you want to do. Go to wordpress.com slash all about Android for 15% off any new plan purchase. That's wordpress.com slash all about Android for 15% off your new website. Wordpress.com slash all about Android. And we thank WordPress for their support and for helping us make great websites. Thank you, WordPress. You're the best. Also helping all right. me make a website. Uh, I, I think we can issue <laughs> the, hardware, the hardware bumper. No, let's do, do it, it again. again. You want to do it again? We'll let's do bumper. it again. Victor, would you, do you mind? So we're flying by the seat of our pants, Flo. Why don't we start with the Pixel? Yeah, let's start. Okay, well, not just any Pixel. It's the Pixel 3A and 3A XL. Possibly. You mean the three? You mean the three axle? Th yes, the three axle exactly. The the thra <laughs> and the thraxle. Uh, so <laughs> apparently, we might be getting. No, we are getting a hardware announcement on May seventh. That's two days before my birthday and Ron's birthday, uh, and also the first day of Google I/O. So it looks like we may be going back to hardware being announced at the Google I/O keynote, which is very exciting. It's very exciting. I mean, demos are fun. Don't get me wrong, but. Hardware, I mean, that's the fun stuff. So we've been teasing this Pixel 3a and 3a XL that's been going on. Well, now Google is teasing it on, it's in the Google store. They've got a teaser that says something big is coming to the Pixel universe. I don't know if it's bigger than the phones they have already, but it's certainly going to add to the phones that Google sells, which maybe will convert more Samsung users. Uh, who knows, as is the well, trend. I, I, I've been screaming for a mid-level Google phone for a while. Yes. So right? reportedly the 3A lineup will offer the same camera performance, which is definitely like, that's the Google signature thing there. Like now you've got that Pixel Core processor. You've got, you just have that amazing night sight. It's like how it doesn't really compare. And so of course, put that into a body that's just a little bit cheaper than the high-end phones. That's how you sell yep. phones. It is very clever that they are leveraging the 3A with their partnership with uh, Marvel Studios and the upcoming Avengers film. Oh yeah, um, that's right. I saw yeah. that going around social so, media. I'm, I, I will, I approve of that. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's neat. It's going to be, I mean, this is, this is hardly a kept secret. Um, you know, we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. I'm glad they're finally making it official. And, uh, if we get some good phones out of it, that, that at an affordable price that can help convert more Samsung and, uh, Apple users, I'm all for it. So. And also there will be new play emoji coinciding with the release of Avengers end game. So you'll be able to there hang out, I'm guessing with Captain America and the subway platform. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. And nobody, oh, just kidding. Not going to say that because I was about to spoil some stuff. Yes. Don't, no spoilers. Well, okay. So moving away from uh, Google for a moment and back to foldables because it is all about foldables. Um, as if foldable screens weren't enough, uh, LG is throwing their hat in the ring and attempting to make, the honestly, the phone of my dreams. And okay. once again, I hope, Flo and Victor, you're still sitting down. Um a transparent display foldable phone. This is literally the phone of Ron's dreams, by the way, because it's this is a lot like the phone literally. in the Expanse. Yeah, the phone in the Expanse is what I want. Exactly. That doesn't fold, but it is transparent. But so basically, uh, details of a patent filed by LG in 2015 show a smartphone with a transparent folding screen. So one half of the phone would be transparent, while the other half would have an opaque section uh, that would store the battery and internal components uh, because you need to hide that stuff somewhere. Um, for, and yes, now. For now. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so now, but uh, before you get too excited, it doesn't seem as if as if LG is in any rush to uh, get this out uh, because this patent was filed in 2015. LG has gone on record saying that they don't actually aren't buying into the whole foldable revolution. Um, and instead, they're opting for a more conservative approach like we were just looking at the uh, the second screen option in the LG V50, um, which is basically a two screen phone 
in the LG V50, but isn't actually a foldable display. But according to this patent filing, they have thought about the idea of not only a foldable phone, but a transparent display, which is the phone of my dreams. So uh, maybe LG will dust this off and actually manufacture this. Who knows? But it is out there in the ether. If we all, if like Peter Pan, if we all wish it, maybe it will come true. Well, no. yeah, and just, I know this is very inside baseball, but it'd be very nice to have LG kind of come out with something a little innovative because Samsung's been really steamrolling everyone. But, I mean. but that's the thing, LG, LG's firmly put themselves in the role of like, we're gonna we're being safe. We're a safe phone brand. You know what? And, it probably yeah. is a good time because if you're not gonna have anything to knock Samsung off the foldable rocker, then you gotta yep. come out with a bang, right? Yeah, I guess so. But um, I don't know. I, I think this is great. But the fact that it's a four-year-old patent shows that someone dreamed up the idea. They came up with it. They want to get it before someone else does. And they're either going to sit on it until someone else figures it out. Or maybe they're doing it in their R&D. You know, they're just trying to get the prices down. Who knows? Hopefully, this leads to transparent aluminum, the alloy of the future. Um, but time will tell. So Time <laughs> will also tell what is going on with Google's home strategy, because if you've been paying attention to some of the Android specific blogs out there, 9 to 5 Google in particular, had pointed out that Google had accidentally leaked the forthcoming Nest Hub Max. And I had to take a sh uh, pause there because there are three names to this. So it's not the Google Home Hub. It's the I'm assuming would be Google Nest Hub Max or something like that. Anyway, I don't know. But apparently this is a product that is going to happen. So Google is going to rename or at least launch a hub with the Nest moniker attached to it. And according to reliable source through 9to5Google, Google will relaunch the Google Home Hub as the Nest Hub, putting it in line with the new 10-inch version of the device, dubbed the Google Nest Hub Max. So... There will be two devices, I guess. The larger of the two devices will pack a Nest camera for security and duo calls. So you'll have the specific Nest security one, and then you'll have just a smaller one that I guess it's rebranded. That's why it's a little like, it's it's a little slightly confusing just for that. Uh, but it, we're not really sure when this is going to happen, if it's going to happen alongside the Pixel 3a launch on that May 7th um, keynote at Google I.O. or... If it's going to be like a random update, we're just going to wake up one day and it'll just be there in the Google store. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, no, I'm just right now, I'm a little perplexed at how this is going to work because a lot of people are kind of up in arms over why are they attaching the Nest brand to it? What, you know, why are they doing this? But I mean, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We Again, I, I, I challenge what value does the Nest brand have? Now, the only now when reading this, I understand because Ho Google Home Hub was built in such a way to be like the the nerve center of your IoT home, right? Yeah. And that it had that that great control panel, and that's a natural extension to the Nest thermostat and the Nest security cam and all that all that sort of stuff. But and so I understand the product confusion that might exist going, oh, you have Nest products, you need this Google Home product to bring them all together. I understand that with the Nest products, it's probably good to have a Nest version so that the people who aren't like us say, oh, I just buy Nest, 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 mm -hmm, that's what mm -hmm. I need, so give me the Nest thing. I challenge that get rid of Nest and make it the Google Home thermostat and the Google Home, you know, cam camera and the Google Home doorbell and all that sort of stuff and keep it all within Google Home and Google Assistant and all that stuff because I just think Google's the more powerful brand. Um, but what do I know? Because maybe people don't trust Google and they think they trust Nest not knowing that it's owned by Google. Yeah, or know. it's just that Nest, They folks know that Nest is the home product. Like if you go to Home Depot and Lowe's, there is a Nest display, not necessarily. Well, I guess there were Google displays after the Google Home came out and they started doing yeah. that. And maybe that's why they were branding it. So it makes more sense when they put it in the middle of Lowe's and Home Depot. Maybe. Yep. Consolidated oh, well. marketing. I, I don't Save know. Strange, funds. strange decisions, strange decisions. All right. So, um, Want to take a moment and talk to you guys about the Motorola G7 phones? Yay. Yeah, I had the opportunity, thanks to their friends at Motorola, to play with the Motorola G7, which I showed when I got it. But I also got my hands on the Motorola G7 Power. Ooh. Uh, which is, yes, which is the uh, the big battery version. It's like we'll 5,000 milliamps? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
so many milliamps. Um, but uh, but yeah, so these are the Motorola G line. I went to the uh, the the launch event for these. There's a third phone in the mix, which is the low cost one, the G, the Moto G7 Play, which I didn't get the I didn't get to play with, ironically. Um, but what Motorola is doing with the G lineup is no different than what they've done over the past over the past few years, which is the Motorola G has been a affordable, sensible phone that gives you a solid smartphone Android experience. Um, and, and I, I want to say, I don't want to use value as a bad word flow. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a value choice, but it doesn't mean that you're skimping out on it. Yeah. Right. It, it's just, it's affordable, which I think is fair. Yeah. Um, you know, especially, you know, given that, you know, like the, you know, one plus six T is a great phone, but that's getting pretty expensive. And that's, you know, like it's, you know, phone prices are getting out of control. So it's nice to see Motorola come out with a $300 level phone, um, that, you know, that, you know, and I don't want to say a normal person, but an average person can get and get a great experience out of it. So starting with the Motorola G7, um, Good. There's good and bad. All right. It's got a great screen. Right. It's a solid phone. The battery. You know. I, I forget the milliamps on the on the Moto G7, but um, you know, I, I think in, in the three thousand range or so mm -hmm. around there. So it can get you through a day. Um, it's a good go-to phone. Uh, for all your needs. Uh, Motorola has really, uh, I talked about when they announced it, they stripped out uh, the operating system to be as close to standard Android as possible. Um, very few little Motorola kind of touches there to it, which is a big difference from the Motorola of yesteryear. Um, they've got some stuff in the camera. They have some Moto kind of gestures and things like that. But aside from right. that, it's stock Android. Um, super easy to use. Those of you at home who uh, love the uh, headphone jack, it's got a headphone jack. Um, so like if you're looking for a standard mid entry, if you need to give a phone to your kid, to a teenager, or if you're, if you're starting out in your career, you can't afford the nicest phone. Th if you got a Motorola G7, you would be solid and will give you exactly what you need. Um, that said, there's some t negatives to it. Mm. Um, the battery's fine. Like I said, it didn't, you know, blow me away, but mm. it, it, it made it through the day, which is important. Um, whether or not you like the, the teardrop, teardrop notch or not, it is there. So it's hard to see on this, but, uh, Looks there is a teardrop plus notch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind it. You get used to it. Um, and, uh, also there's no NFC, which is oh, something that I've come, I've come to depend on greatly, but for the price point of, you know, like I, uh, you know, I think Best Buy's got this for one ninety nine. You can get it at Amazon hmm. for two ninety nine. Um, you know, it's an affordable, affordable phone um, that that you know can get the job done. Um, but if you're looking for a little more, if you're looking for a little more, you know, oomph to it, mm. the Motorola G7 Power is the is the one that I would go with. All right. Um, so this is got uh, just quick on the specs. You know, it's, it's six point six point two inch HD plus. Uh, Max vision display. It's got the 199 aspect ratio, which I've become addicted to, oddly enough. Mm. Um, it's got three gig of memory, um, 32 gig of storage. It does have a micro SD expansion card, which is cool. Um, camera wise, 12 megapixel on the back with the with the Motorola quarter lens system there. Um, eight megapixel on the front. But like we talked about, the 5,000 milliamp battery. Um, this sucker is a beast, right? I, as an experiment, I gave it a full charge. All right. And just carried it around with me using it very lightly, you know, not really doing too much with it, but but also not not using it. Um, that was five days ago and we're at 78 percent. What? Yes. <laughs> so right now you can see we are at 77 percent. Wow. Right, now. right. So um, it's crazy. If I did nothing with this phone, according to the battery stats, it's got 26 days left of battery. That's if I don't use it, right? right. <laughs> Once you start using it and connecting and doing all that stuff, but you could easily get through. You could go away for a week and, you know, like five days or so and probably not have to charge. That's how insane this battery is. Does um, it have any other bells and whistles besides the big battery? Not really. And in fact, it actually, what you get for battery, it takes away from the screen, so actually, I, I found the display on the on the Motorola G7 to be a little nicer than the display on the Motorola G7 Power. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, it doesn't have NFC either, so they both don't have NFC. So to get to that lower price point, they're they're sacrificing components like NFC. Um, 
and I will admit, you do have a big battery. It is a heavy, chunky phone. It is a, it is a, so it, it is a noticeably like thicker, noticeably heavier phone. Um, but like you said there on their website, they're at, you know with with average use up to three days of power on a single charge. Um, you know, and if you can serve that, I think you could push you can serve that. I think you could push it to four or five uh, days. So uh, really, really just fascinating to see what they're able to do, able to pack into it. Um, all in all, I like these phones. I've always liked these phones. I've always been a fan of the Motorola G, G series. Um, you know, I think that the uh, the price point and the Android operating stuff is the key to this. Is that you're you're not paying a thousand dollars for a flagship phone, and from a software standpoint, you're not getting anything less. Um, you know, you're not getting a crazy camera like the like the One Plus Six um, uh, or the or the Pixel Three. Like it's not like I don't think the camera's going to blow anyone away, but it's also not going to be bad. It will take pictures. It'll take just as good of pictures as you need. Um, you know, and and I, I just think you know, in this expensive cell phone world, it's nice to have an option that is affordable and can give you everything that you that you want out of the phone. So. Very curious how this. I'm very curious how this market is going to change when this Pixel 3a comes in. I mean, right now, I mean, like if if the Pixel 3a didn't exist, the Moto G7 and G7 Power are my two recommendations for a mid-range phone. Yeah, easily, hands down. Well, um, oh, I should note that the I did get the with the six seven Power. Um, I got a nice little metallic blue color there. That is really pretty. That's a it's really a, pretty phone for 250 it's a bucks. Pretty phone. Yeah. So 250 bucks for four days of battery life. That's crazy. That's a good travel yeah. phone. If you're going yeah. from like country to country, that is a good phone to take with you. I would yeah, imagine. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, you get, you get a little more, um, you get a little more storage with the G7. You get 64 gig versus the 32 gig in the G7 power, um, and you get one a little extra RAM with the G7 versus G7 power. Four gig in the G7, three gig in the G7 power. But um, so the G7 power is a little, ironically, for something with the <laughs> word power in it, is yeah. dialed back in terms of its specs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but you know, but what you're what you're lacking in extra memory, you're gaining an extra battery. So it's a choice that you a choice that you have to make. Um, I don't know. I think these are great phones. If I had a teenager, I would be buying him or her. If my kids were teenagers, I would. <laughs> luckily, they're not. I've got a long time not to go. Yet. But I would get them the Moto, the Moto G7 in an instance as a as a good entry point Android phone for sure. Maybe they're yeah. going to ask for see through phones. Maybe those will. Maybe LG will finally have launched its see through phone. <laughs> when will? By the time my kids have phones. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay, so let you let's send this out with one more phone, just one more phone. So Oppo, which is the name we throw around a lot here, even though you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily able to buy the phones here in the United States, but globally, Oppo makes a splash. So they've got this new Reno smartphone series, but it's it's not a slot machine. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, but actually what it does have is it has a camera slot. So there's, there's, you know, a camera that pops up, but it's not just any camera. There is a Reno standard edition and the Reno 10 times zoom edition. So if you want to get the 10 X zoom edition that is available, otherwise, uh, you're just getting a phone with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset, a 6.6 .6 inch full HD plus AMOLED display has a very generous 93.1% body uh, screen to body ratio, which of course is helped by that pop-up slot. Other Ugh. features include NFC, an optical in-display fingerprint reader, which is kind of becoming all the rage these days, Dolby Atmos, a 4,065 milliamp battery, uh, high-res audio support, triple microphones, this thing is packed. Oh, and it's very pretty on the back in this picture that we see on Engadget. Uh, the camera is a 13 megapixel F over 3.0 periscope zoom camera. So Oppo had actually teased this back in February. Now it's here in the flesh, or rather it was <laughs> announced uh, in Shanghai. And uh, it also has an eight megapixel F over 2.2 super wide camera at 120 degrees and a whopping 48 megapixel F over 1.7 main camera. So that, my gosh, that is a focal length ranging from 16 millimeter to 160 millimeter. 
And that is the one in the 10X uh, hybrid zoom. I am just astounded by the specs on this thing. And as we have seen, what becomes very popular in China usually finds its way to us. So can, can we go back? Can we go back to the photo of it, by the way? Yes, Flo, please. It's really uh, well, pretty. It's very pretty, but I, I'm falling in love with the pop-up camera wedge. It looks like a little like hello peekaboo. It's like, yeah, it's like a little. It's like hello, hi, camera's here. Pop up, here you go. Like it's it's funny because we joked about I forgot the phone with the little with the with the rectangle based pop up camera. Think it was an Oppo phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Well, I love that someone someone in Oppo product development is like, listen, pop up lenses is the future, and I'm gonna make this work. And I don't. I, this one is neat. I think I think with that wedge, you get a little more stability in the pop up, right? It, it's it's not as flimsy. Um, I'd be worried about it popping that. up in my pocket. Um, and that's not a euphemism, but yeah, I, I'd worry, you know, what, what would happen if it pops up and you're walking and there's a break and that's the thing I want to feel it. But I feel way more confident with this design yes. than the little rectangle popping up out of the corner. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and there is a standard edition. So the one that I had mentioned is the, the 10 times zoom one. And there is a standard edition with the same 48 megapixel camera. So it's a lot of. Numbers. Those are big numbers. Big numbers. Big numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's yeah. interesting. So Oppo is related to OnePlus, right? Oppo yes. is an investor uh, or backer or whatever is OnePlus. Yes. Does this sort of technology make its way to OnePlus ever? Probably. I mean, I yeah. would imagine if they're sharing factory lines, if uh, OnePlus has access to that, that's something they would consider. I think... Mm. I would really want to know what the OnePlus fan base, if they are hyped about the idea of a pop-up camera, because OnePlus is a very fan servicey uh, OEM, which has boded very well for them this in this entire time. I mean, look, we were just talking about how people are leaving Samsung for them. So yeah. I'm wondering if that's something that they could say, hey, folks who love us, do you want something like this from us? And I imagine that they would find a way to make that happen. So. Well, it's it's funny because you talk about OnePlus and pleasing uh, fans. We were we were going to skip this, but I think we should go back to it. Yeah. Uh, the OnePlus Seven Pro recently possibly leaked, and uh, some rumors that it could be the the OnePlus's entry into the five G market. But what's more interesting is that this leak uh, features a curved screen and a headphone jack. Talk about making the people happy. Yeah. Was... Uh, no, nothing makes users happy than a headphone jack. Do you then think? Not Chloe, having do you to buy a dongle. Yeah, true, exactly. And as someone who's a OnePlus user with my red dongle while I was out running with my headphones, um, Flo, what do you, do you think that these leaks are, are true or do you think that these are just uh, internet speculation run wild? I, I'm always remiss to say anything is true until I hear something from the company because it's, you know, it's all just rumors in the end. But I also think the 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 OnePlus fans are very loud and proud and if they want a curved screen and a headphone jack it's coming it's coming well and we're due for a one plus seven i mean the one plus six uh, i'm a proud one plus six user and, and true. it's been out it's been out for a while seven is due right that's right what six came out last summer and then we got the 6t yep. over the fall and so it is time for a refresh of that one plus and they are gonna kind of bring over what is kind of popularized overseas so I'm curious, and I'm very curious about the curved screen too. I hope that it's more usable than kind of what I'm experiencing with the Samsung devices. Sometimes right. they're a little frustrating to use. Uh, anyway. So much hardware this week, Flo. Yeah, so it's much. a lot. I'm a little bamboozled by all the hardware. Before we go into the apps, do you want to talk about the Galaxy Fold a little more? Um, do you want to talk about the Galaxy Fold a little more? I could talk about it for all night, but I but we I feel like that's adequately covered, I think. So. Yeah, I think my if I had one final thought about it, it would be that I am curious to see how this is going to wear down over the next couple of weeks. I want to hear from the folks who have it in their hands in the next couple of weeks what the real like what the real usage is like, what what life is like with a foldable phone. Because I think when you have it at first in your hands, it's so exciting to see this, especially because we've been dying for innovation. But I think the real test is what is this like in the real day to day? Like when you get back to the dull drums of the everyday work life. And it's, it's the software. It's all about the software. Well, right? we'll see if One UI can do the deed. 
<laughs> All right. Well, let's do the the apps deed yes. next. With a little, little little apps action. <laughs> So apps were going to take nice and easy today and kind of the first wave of taking it nice and easy is looking at uh, the Google Play Store redesign that 9to5Google has managed to kind of hint away at. So this is... APK was uncovered that sort of showed this new, this new lighter theme Ooh. coming to the Play Store. Uh, we've got menus. We've got four tabs, kind of very similar. So what we see here is very similar to the Google Home app. So I see a lot of this redesign. You kind of have like the menu uh, buttons at the bottom. You have a lot of the information is very condensed. And actually, if you look at it, it looks also very close to the Google Podcasts app. Uh, for anybody out there who is actually using that on a full-time basis. Now, there's no dedicated tab for accessing music in the bottom bar, but there is a new browse music shortcut in the navigation drawer, which uh, is, no, navigation drawer kind of remains the same, but but different. Like there's just this lighter feeling overall um, for this particular redesign. I don't know, Ron, how are you feeling about kind of the way Google's been streamlining UI across the board? I I like it, but I also like it if it comes with the dark mode because I don't like to use all that whiteness. I was about to say the same thing. Where's the dark mode? Right? Like that isn't that the, isn't that the future of Google app development? But in order to get to dark mode, you need to do this step first. And I think that the changes that have been made to Google, to Google News, to Google Home, to Gmail, yeah. to all this stuff has been moving in such such a right direction. I love how they're taking material design and introducing those new custom fonts and introducing, you know, the 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 cleaner, rounder kind of look. And then once they add that dark mode, then it's like, oh, it's perfection. So I I I welcome this change to the Google Play Store, which every time I go into it, I cringe. And for those wondering, the font that Google uses is the Google Sans font, which is an open source font, and you can download it for your own use if you like. Just a little tidbit there. Yep. Cool. That was sultry. I feel relaxed. Thanks, Flo. I tried. Uh, <laughs> all right. So a uh, little bit, a little bit of snark for a moment. But do you remember, Flo? Do you remember Google Currents? Yes. Yeah, that was the that was a magazine Briefly. app. It was a magazine app that Google had uh, that was kind of like for publishers and for, you know, for content. Um, yeah. They actually rebranded that as Google Play Newsstand, and then that was folded into Google News. But I hope you're still sitting down. Yes. It's 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 back. Well, kind of. Um, but before I tell you about Currents, do you remember Google Plus? I think you do. Yeah. Yes, I do. It's not too okay. long ago that it left us. Right. You remember how they just shut it down recently? Yes. We're still Well, it's back. In less than in less than two weeks. Um, so at the Cloud Next 2019 conference, Google announced that Google Plus for Enterprise is now called Google Currents. <laughs> okay, so um, wait, they took an old uh, moniker and they reapplied it here. Yes, yeah, so they took the old brand name of Google Currents, which okay. they own the trademark for and all stuff like that. They rebranded Google Plus for Enterprise as Google Currents, and basically it's a new beta as a beta app that they're uh, targeting at the workplace for the enterprise. And according to Google, Google Currents is a way for quote unquote employees to share knowledge and engage in meaningful discussions with others across their organization, regardless of title or geography. So, so it sounds like Google Currents is kind of taking a stab at Slack. I was going to say it sounds like Microsoft Yammer. If anybody remembers oh, Yammer. Yammer. That's, a, that's a good choice. That's a good yeah, <laughs> Yammer. Oh, man. But I guess it makes sense because if you're using the G Suite at work and you've already got your employees hooked into that, then all you have to do is just onload this into whatever server yeah. side thingamajig, thingamabob. And then everybody is able to essentially have like a centralized forum uh, where everybody can come together. I mean, it makes sense. I'm okay with but, it. I like this consolidation of all this Google like work stuff. I want the work stuff to be separate from. 
the consumers. I would love to hear from somebody who has Google Apps in their workplace and is using Google Currents for enterprise and actually using it. Going back to what we're talking about material, yeah. if you go back, uh, Victor, if you can go back to the screenshot of it, they did take, it doesn't look like Google Plus. They they did give it a little Google new design kind of theory to the screenshots of it. It looks a little, you know, kind of cleaner and that sort of thing. It's very you know, clean. It, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, very curious. It's going to be available on the desktop and as a mobile app. Um, and if anybody uses this in their workplace, write in. Please let us know. Yes, please. You can e email us at aa at twit.tv. We want to hear from you. Um, I actually have several small businesses that are using the Google App Suite, so I'm going to see if I can opt into this and play with it. Um, but if anything, you know, just a way to increase collaboration and, and yeah, fill a hole that Slack and Yammer and other kind of uh, collaboration tools are filling. And of course, Google wants to get in on that. And there are companies who might be like, you have to use our own, you, you know, these are sanctioned because they're secure and all things like that. So if you work for one of those companies, let us know. We'd love to hear about it. Very, this this uh, rat race for companies to kind of have their own executive uh, or, yeah, their own executive spin on things is... um. It's very interesting. But for me, it just means a lot of cool free stuff I get to use for my freelance business. So I welcome there it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's so the old, there's the old currents. Oh. <laughs> I remember that icon. RIP. Oh. RIP. Or actually not RIP because it's been resuscitated. Back, back to the dead. I wonder, so is Google Currents in that in that Google graveyard? I wonder because then does it come back? <laughs> right. It's been zombified. Uh that, yes. And, and, the, let's see the Google Cemetery. Is, for those who don't know, gcemetery.co. Yes. Which I, which ironically is sponsored by. I'm getting an ad for Slack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let's see what it says for Currents. So Currents is not in the Google Cemetery. Okay, because it's been revived and it is now a zombie. It is a walking zombie in the enterprise. That's crazy. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. It is there. 2011 to oh. 2013. So they did not update this to say that it is uh, back to life yet. So it died and was reborn as something new. Yep. Yes. So. Well, that's nice. Uh, guys, All right. Anyway, it's with on. the spring theme, right? Okay. So we've got an email actually, which is very exciting. We love emails. We really appreciate when you send them to us. Uh, so this one comes from Cobb from the UK. Cobb writes in, whilst listening to episode 415, Claw Control, have a look at the attached photo of full Android 8 running on my aftermarket head unit in Volkswagen Golf. It's great. I was reminded of how bad Snapchat is. I was so enraged that even after the update, it was still so bad that I researched to find the reason why as per the below, below the link. Apparently, it is because they are using a 10-year-old camera API as opposed to the newer V2. I actually tweeted the below link on the official Snapchat Twitter account. Unbelievable how badly Android users are being treated. We have to suffer abuse from iPhone people calling our camera CCTV quality because of their app. Grr, ran over. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Cobb. This is exactly why I kind of stopped using Snapchat. Um, also, the declining viewership. Um, that was definitely a thing. I know this was a conversation that we had last week, but it is just another example of how frustrating it is when you have two major platforms like Android and iOS. And when developers consider one over the other, like this is what happens. You're going to lose users. You're going to frustrate people. People are going to see what's going on. And we really appreciate um, listeners like Cobb for writing in and kind of pointing out like this is just this this screenshot that we have on the screen is just like look how low res that is. It's that is it's embarrassing, but like I'm not surprised from Snap at all, given what their priorities are and how they operate. And so like the best the best thing you can do is not use it. Yeah, you know, and not to mention, honestly, the content on there is not it's it's not gotten great. a little it's not great, Bob. It's it's yeah. gotten a little seedy. I'm just gonna yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Uh it's like watching Inside Edition of social networks. Wow. Wow, there you go. No shade in all right. but also all the shade. All well, right. Th thank you, Cobb, for the email. You can write in to AAA at twit.tv. Yes, you can. Yep. Yes, you can. Flo, Flo, you want to take us to the next place? Yeah, I kind of, I think we should go ahead and duke it out between the two of us. This is going to become very personal in just a second. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Arena. Oh my goodness! Wow. All right, Flo. Well, I wasn't here last week, so so walk us through uh, last week's uh, yes. 
Apps. So last week it was between uh, me, Jason, and our guest, Joshua Vergara. And let's see the results here. So we had Calendar Notify, which was from Jason. Uh, my pick was the Elder Scrolls Blades. And Turo was Josh's pick. And it's kind of somewhat even across the board. So coming Very first even. is my pick, which is the Elder Scrolls Blades. Uh, coming in second was Josh slash the guest's pick, uh, Turo, which was an app that lets you rent people's cars on the street, <laughs> basically. And cool. then Jason had Calendar Notify, which uh, basically let you see your calendar in the notification shade. Uh, the standing this week, Ron, if you would like to take it away for us. Yes, so 14 weeks of the arenas, thanks to Wade County in the chat room for keeping track of this um flow that win br brought you up closer but not quite in first not place quite. yet the guests are still in first with 45 points flow you were in second with by one point with 44 points jason's in third with 32 and i'm way 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 in the back with 26 points still making up for being out uh because of the babies but you never know i can catch up yeah. it's, it's so yeah, early it's week 14 we got so many we get so many more weeks to go um Gosh. but since i missed last week and technically lost that means i go first yes you do so Flo, I'm hoping that you installed my app so we can show it to our friends uh, who are watching the show. I'm wiping um, my phone first. <laughs> Cool. Okay. All right. Wipe, wipe, wipe. So everybody who watches the show, longtime viewers of the show know that I love to do apps. I love productivity apps, but I love, I wanted to find an app that took a different approach to productivity and a different approach to really kind of accomplishing your goals. And sure enough, it's an app that's been around for a while. And Flo, you were surprised that it wasn't in the arena yet. Mm -hmm. It's called Goalify. Uh, my ta my goals, tasks, and habits. And basically what this is is that as opposed to having a to-do tracker or you know a, product a productivity app, it is a way to track goals. So um, what you can do is you can um, set goals that are here we're showing and in, 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 uh, this is the screen where you can set up your new goals. You can just start with one of their templates. Um, so let's do that where you okay. can, they have some pre-made templates to help you get started. And so let's say you want to set a goal to run three miles, or you want to set a goal to write 10 pages of your novel, or you want to set a goal to eat healthier or some other kind of thing. They've got a, a bunch of templates already set in place. So let's go to sports. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and it's going to the one uh, more natural for me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's scroll down to running. They, they show you a bunch of different sports there. And yeah. so we're going to, we're going to set a goal to run. And you want to say you can and they've got suggestions. You can say I'm going to go for a run every day or I'm going to be running three miles every day or I want to be running 15 miles every week. Those are just options to get you started. Um, you can change the units that it measures in or what the um, you can narrow it down. Um, so, you know, say I want to run for four. You know, I'll be running 45 minutes every day. So click on minutes there. There you go. And hit that second one. Boop. And there there you go. And you hit you move forward Boop. with that goal. Ta and ta-da, Flo has just made a goal to run 45 minutes every day. Um, okay. And so what it does is it sinks into your account. And now when you look at your screen, you see your goal is there to run zero out of 45 minutes. And if you tap on it, you can keep track of what you do. So if you do that, you say, okay, I ran for 15 minutes. Boop. And or, so there you go. Yay. And so now we're 33% of the way there. So it's a great way to change your approach in the things that you're doing and how you track them as opposed to doing like, oh, I've, these are these things I have to do. Make it into a, you know, gamify it, make it to a goal and make it to, you know, someplace where you get a reward when you cross that line. I know for me at work, I drown in emails. And so I say, listen, I want to have my inbox at, at I want to be at inbox zero by the end of the week. And that's my goal. And I'm going to track my progress on a daily basis. Um, now what's, um, what's also neat. So in addition to all the, um, templates that they have, you can, so let's start a new, add a new goal there, Flo. Yep. And a uh, new goal. There you go. And you can start, start a custom goal and you can set stuff up on your own way. So you can, you know, make it a flex goal, which is something where you want to stretch what you're already doing. You can make it a task goal where you want to complete things an avoidance goal. If you want to avoid sweets or some other thing or a limit goal, it's really just an interesting way, an interesting paradigm in how they um, kind of, how they kind of sum it up uh, in terms of how you organize the goals. But if you hit back, in addition to goals, they have gamified this thing. So hit the X, go back to the main screen and go to and tap new goal in the upper right hand corner. And they have what they call challenges. So you can say new challenge. And what you can do is if you are friends, if your other friends are using Goalify, I can flow. I can challenge you to run 45 minutes uh -oh. a week and we can keep track of each other's progress and make it into kind of a fun way to keep track of of, of that sort of thing. 
Um, and if you close that out, oops. There you go. Hit nice. See, it's very talked about. You said we were going to get into a fight there. So yeah. So that you give this code to your friends, and they can plug in and, and tie into your uh, challenge. Okay. If you go new goal, um, if you hit tap new goal again in the upper right hand corner, there are promoted challenges, which are kind of like you know Xbox Live in the whole world out there, where where uh, the Goalify people are promoting challenges. So you know tap the water one. Um, you can participate with all the Goalify users to, you know, to do the stay hydrated goal, um, or and and take that challenge, and you can accept it, and we'll add it to your uh, to your uh, activity list. So, Goalify, it's a way to keep track of your goals, make it interesting, make it a little more gamified. Um, it's free in the Google Play Store. You can have up to three goals uh, in the free version, and then if you unlock uh, the paid version via the in-app purchases, you can have as many goals as you need or want. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways to look at it, different ways to slice the data and all that fun stuff. Uh, it's really powerful app, really well designed. Um, Goalify, free in the Google Play Store. Check it out if you want help uh, achieving your goals. So there you go. Well, now I know what I'm setting up tonight. Thanks, Ron. Sure thing. You can do it, Flo. I believe in you. I'm trying. My goal is just to leave the house every day. <laughs> so like yeah, if I can do good that, goal. good for me. It's a very good goal. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Ron. Uh, it was a great app pick. So I've brought a bit of a low key app to the, sorry, I'm like multitasking now. Uh, I've brought Notinger to the app store. Now I have uh, kind of mentioned that I've been looking for apps to sort of replace some of the apps we've kind of gotten used to on Android. And so one particular app that's sort of gotten bogged down in my life is Google Keep because I have so much stored in there now. I have so many things pinned um, and I'm not really using it as much for notes now as much as like a storage center for really important things. So when I want to just take a quick note, I found this app, uh, which literally lets you kind of basically text yourself a note kind of sort of. So the way it works is the notes that you make uh, will show up like this, kind of like you would in a message. And uh, when there's an, when something is done to the note, it will show up like this, kind of grayed out as a reply. So if I've got a new note, um, let's say, oh, I don't know, I want to remind myself to do something. So I'm going to remind me tomorrow to turn off something. All right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and so then what I can do is I can, I mean, I don't have to write, remind me, I can write, turn off something. So then I can hit this little thing and then um, tomorrow, Wednesday at 7 p.m., I suppose, I can set this reminder and then it will kind of turn over to show that tomorrow there is a reminder that's set up. So this is, I mean, honestly, it's, this is kind of all that this app is. It's just an easy way to just kind of take notes um, at, you add notes to it as you go on and it saves it. it, you know, the notes are just stored on the device and they never leave. And you just kind of have this like long running note. Um, it's like a never ending notepad. Uh, it's super fast. It's quick to kind of slide up. Uh, you can long press to get some more options. If you want to copy or archive a message, or maybe you want to edit something, very easy, but that's honestly all there is to this app. It's just incredibly simple. So maybe nice. if you want to take down somebody's number or something, you could just use Notinger. Very cool. I love a simple app. So extremely simple. Talking about productivity there, Notinger. Uh, it's a dollar, but you know I support devs, and I would encourage you to support devs as well because it is just a dollar. Okay, think about it. It's like a third of your coffee. Okay. You, you so, can do that. So the gr the great thing about an arena that's only the two of us, even though we're like battling it out, you know, fighting each other for the win, you there's no guests. So Flo, you're gonna pass the guests no matter what, and there's no Jason. So I'm gonna get, uh, gain ground on Jason. So either way, Flo, we win this we arena. We both win, which is really but, just perfect. Right. So so we don't even need to know who's gonna be the winner next no. week. Well, you know, no. but but if you do want to get competitive, yes. you can vote in the arena. You can go to twit.to slash AAA poll four sixteen. That's twit.to slash AAA poll four sixteen, because it's April sixteenth for episode four sixteen. Uh, and you can vote on your favorite app, whether it's Notinger or Golify. 
And I'm curious who Victor's going to yeah, vote for. Yeah, I wonder for. if Victor's going to start a start a war between us today. Yeah, Victor, you have to choose. <laughs> who do you love more? <gasps> oh, my gosh, Victor. I can't believe it. Victor wants to take notes. Victor, I thought yep. we, had a, we had something. Well, I, I agree with Flo about Google Keep being like yeah. lots, Slow, of stuff, after lots of a stuff while. in one place. It's like, tough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just takes forever to like load now, which is fine. Wow, time. Victor. Now I know. Now I know where we stand. Victor has no, uh, Victor doesn't want to gamify his life. <laughs> <laughs> and, Although, Victor, you're a Pokemon Go player, so you're already gamifying your life just in a different way. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we did it, Flo. We, we did survived. it. We survived. Good did. job. You know, I thought we did pretty well, actually. We did great. I, Jaime was awesome. I miss Jason. I was looking forward to seeing him, but he's off having fun. I think all in all, this is the this is this is the best show that we've done in 416, 415 previous episodes. Yeah, I like favorite. it when it's kind of nice and light like this, you know. And we yeah. had kind of we had Jaime on here to talk about the foldable phone, and that was really exciting. So, but like, how do you really feel about it though? Now that you've had just kind of a little bit of time for it to sink in. The foldable phone? Yeah, I'm just still before we go, curious. just like any last thoughts from you. I'm still infinitely curious. I still, I don't love the Samsung. I, I still, I, I agree with Jaime in that, in that I think I like the Mate a little more mm -hmm. just because I feel like the Samsung foldable with that second screen isn't, I feel like they're cheating. I feel like that inner screen is the foldable and that's neat, but like that yeah. second screen, it doesn't look usable and doesn't look like, it looks half-baked and so, it and it looks really thick. I don't know. I'm not sold on the Galaxy Fold. So. You know what? It reminds me of my first touchscreen phone, which was not a capacitive phone. It was one of the yep. old school. Uh, you had to press to touch. It was from LG, uh, but it was a it had a QWERTY keyboard on the inside. And that thing was so frustrating to use on the front. I was always opening it up to do anything with it. So I go. hope it's not one of those situations. Time it's will tell. The, the market will decide. Also, phones back then were a lot cheaper. They were not That's $1980. Sure. Was I supposed Ooh. to play the hardware bumper again? No. Yes. The roll the hardware bumper, Victor. <laughs> well, three's a charm, right? <laughs> oh, oh, Victor. Whoa. You goat you goat rolled me. <laughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. You want me to come back next week? No more goats. So all right. Let's wrap it up. This Let's has been all up. about Android episode four sixteen. Uh Flo, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at florenceion.com. Uh, join my Discord. We've got links floating around out there on my website and on Twitter. And uh, and on Twitter at oh, that flow. Nice. Uh, on my side of the world, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ronxo. I'm probably more active on Instagram these days. Uh, every now and then I post a zinger to Twitter, though. So you want to keep following that. Um, I mentioned finale podcast earlier in the day. We will be coming back to finale. Uh, it's tough with two screaming babies, but, uh, we have plans. So don't worry. So stay subscribed to that. Um, and scorebit.io is my pinball hardware startup, which we're working very hard on. I was on a long call about that today. Uh, so very excited for that. So those are all my things that I'm working on. So look at us, Ron. We're just working away. Two toiling Tauruses. Indeed. Victor. Uh, <laughs> great job, man. Thank Without, you, Victor. You're, you're the backbone. Thanks. I, at huh. least I got to play that hardware bumper one more time. <laughs> and sneak a goat in there. Oh, worst. Um, uh, Jason's back next week, I believe, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jason's so back we'll get back next to normal. week. Uh. Um, <laughs> and hey, we're, we're, we're three weeks away from IO, Flo. Three weeks away from our birthdays. I know. We're, That's going to be such a crazy week. And three weeks away from Detective Pikachu. It's very exciting. Which excites me. It's all happening. It's all happening all right, in the same week. Why don't you take us out? All right. So that is it this week for the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, if you would like to leave us a voicemail, we are still accepting those. You can call us at 347-SHOW-888. Just type that into your dial pad and that'll reach us. If you want to send us an email, we love those too. Our email address is AAA at twit.tv. Just send it right over. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter or reply to us, you can at Android Show. Very easy to remember. You can also access the Arena Apps list at twit.tv. Dot two, that's T-O, slash Android apps. And you can access the stats at twit.2, that's T-O, slash arena stats, one word. The show notes and past episodes are available at twit.tv slash AAA. 
You can come watch the show live in beautiful Petaluma. Uh, all you need to do is email us at tickets at twit.tv so that we know you are coming so we can put out a chair for you. We always love to have an audience. Uh, of course, when we don't have an audience, we always have Alex here, which we always appreciate. Uh, or, of course, you can catch us live here every Tuesday where we always are at starting at 5 p.m. Pacific time at twit.tv slash live. That is it for the show this week. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in this week. And now Ron and I shall bid you adieu.